Hi, my name is Andrew Vaz. I'm the Senior Director for Product Line Management in Juniper's Automated WAN Solutions Group. Thank you for joining us today in our Building Agile Networks for the Unknown presentation. I want to welcome you to the virtual summit and looking forward to you guys um, hearing what we have to say here. So if we take a look at this at networks today and we look at the job that you have to do as architects, um, operational folks, uh, CTOs making technical decisions, uh, we realize that for next generation networks, we need to be prepared not only for things that we know are coming down the pike, AR, VR, 5G, slicing type of capabilities, uh, cellular to a vehicle to anything type of applications, but also we've just experienced a pretty interesting thing with the COVID-19 pandemic with us having to be ready for unknown um, type of things that'll put stresses on the network. So if you look at what's happened, if we take a look at just these random type of items that can actually affect us greatly, uh, we're in a situation where we frankly have experienced massive change and upheaval in the network. Um, we have some quotes that you can see on the slide here uh, from various folks, but uh, some interesting statistics have come up. We've seen massive increases of about 30, 30 plus percent of user uh, uploads to the network and downloads. We've seen multiple 100% increases in various um, cloud offerings that people are, are trying to log into. Uh, Zoom is a great example, Microsoft Teams calls, et cetera. We had some very interesting statistics also uh, when you can see some of the quotes on the slide here. A Vodafone idea basically said that they experienced a year's worth of traffic growth in just one week. Uh, Satya Nadella from Microsoft basically said that they have had two years worth of digital transformation happen in two months. And even if you look at the uh, internet exchange in Frankfurt, Frankfurt with the uh, DGIX, they've actually hit an all time traffic peak of 9.1 terabits. Uh, this is fascinating because overall we've seen the networks hold up well, but we've seen massive stress in various points of the network. As we're architecting different pieces in the future, besides all the new applications, the more bandwidth needs, the exponentially increasing number of endpoints, uh, we have to be prepared uh, when unknown type of things hit us as a society globally. If we kind of move forward from there and take a look at the networks of today, we also see a bunch of service transitions that are happening today. Uh, if you take a look at traditional business services, for example, you're seeing a migration from traditional services and VPN services to secure SD-WAN enabled services. You're also seeing this business intranet uh, change. Fundamentally, we're saying the internet is the new intranet. So what does that mean? Almost an inverse of what you saw for typical enterprises in terms of their networking. The enterprise data center is no longer necessarily the, uh, the single vault of security. Um, most of the information that enterprises use are actually outside their, their premises. Uh, also, the people on the enterprise in the enterprise are actually accessing that enterprise really off campus in multiple different ways. Uh, from a wireline residential perspective, we're seeing some very interesting things too. Uh, let's take a look at our overall um, broadband capability. Really, we're seeing a massive move to cloud subscriber services, really across any access as people want to unify whatever access their customers come in on and give them the same service experience from a residential broadband perspective. Um, we're seeing more cloud offerings. We're seeing distribution uh, as well. We've seen video changes from traditional video to more streaming type of applications, really unicast video to residential end users. When you think about things like gaming, um, take a look at Facebook, Oculus as an example, with AR and VR, you're actually streaming massive amounts of unicast video traffic to particularly end users. Uh, so we're seeing massive numbers of changes uh, we're seeing the wireless uh, networks also change, especially with the advent of 5G as people are looking at more low latency uh, applications. We're seeing the uh, overall uh, subscriber awareness paradigms change with CUPS models where the control plane and the user plane is getting split. So where are we with this? We're really seeing a change in how people think and architect their networks. We're really moving from a model where we were ultra connectivity focused to where we're looking at how we can change our network to a service delivery network. How do we offer those end services to the users? Okay, this is a big change actually, because as more enterprises are using uh, the network, 
uh, 5G is a great, a great uh, catalyst for this, for example, you're actually seeing them change um, what their expectations are from their service providers. So let's talk about what this means. Um, one of the key questions I get from CXOs globally across the world is, so what's my next killer app that I have to handle? Uh, what we're seeing is that's not the case. There's multiple killer apps. And really, as you see this shift, especially as service providers, from what we consider um, an overall connectivity mind frame for residential users to a more and more involved uh, enterprise service delivery model, uh, you're seeing that each vertical is needing their own set of requirements. We have some things on the right set of the uh, slide here, which actually highlights some of the interesting uh, things we've heard from service providers where enterprises have come to them and asked them for these new services. I thought there's some very interesting data here. Um, in the automotive industry, we've had a, a SP come to us and basically say, hey, I have an automotive customer who's asking for a private 5G slice of my network. And I was very curious why. Um, a very interesting point for us is that there's 10 to 100 million lines of code on cars these days. Almost 70% of fixes uh, seem to be done in software, even for cars. So what they wanted to be able to do is update their software uh, while the cars are parked at night, in people's homes, et cetera. There's also additional work being done in telematics to stream information from the car, as well as infotainment. We're actually streaming videos, et cetera, to the car for entertainment purposes, for the kids perhaps. Um, there's a number of interesting things here from smart cities, uh, public sector first responder networks where you need very high availability, very high levels of security, um, gaming we talked about. Another very interesting use case is at the bottom right, where we're looking at, uh, we actually did this demo at Juniper uh, with a European service provider where we provided a mobile SD-WAN ambulance. Essentially, it was a 5G connected ambulance, which had backup wings for 4G as well as satellite. So think about how this can impact, obviously, care and medicine and, first, and uh, ambulances, saving people, but also think about the wide variety of applications here and the impact on your network. So at Juniper, we have a five-part strategy in terms of how we actually build out this IP service fabric and really change the network to a service delivery platform to be able to go after these new applications. One thing to keep in mind is that the budget is fundamentally shifting in enterprises. It's moving from the, the enterprise IT group to the line of business heads. They've been asked to go maximize their business. They're looking for service providers, cloud service providers to go partner with, to go deliver their next gen services. At Juniper, our five, uh, our five um, tenants that we're looking at are on the left-hand side of the slide. A massively scalable IP fabric with network slicing, cloud-first platforms uh, from the get-go, the ability to distribute and deliver services via an edge cloud, um, connected security all around, as well as automated operations. So let's take a look at each of these pieces and we'll try to explain why that matters. Like we said, how do you build a network, an agile IP network for the unknown and the known things that you know are coming down the pipe? What questions do we need to ask ourselves when we're building our next gen agile service delivery platform? And these are questions we've gotten from various service providers across the world. So there's a set of business questions. There's also a set of what we feel are network expectations, okay? So is the network capable of adapting? Adaptability, agility is really critical. Is it elastic? Is it scalable, open, cloud native? These are all monikers that are actually important to understand. Well, how does your network do that? How fast can your network respond? Can I slice it? Is it agile enough? Is it economically viable to make changes on the network? Can I offer on-demand economics to my customers? Um, that's an expectation today and services. How do you do that? Is it vulnerable? Does it break anything? Security, reliability. Does it assure a service experience? This is probably the most critical at the end of the day. We see a, cer a certain set of technology enablers that allow us to move towards this agile network, um, starting with massively scalable bandwidth and logical scale, uh, a programmable a set of hardware and network OS, as well as frankly protocols as we bet on the next gen set of protocols like segment routing. Uh, very um, intelligent packet processing. This is critical. It's not just the bandwidth you stream. It's how can you um, move operations on those packets, okay? 
Um, Cloud-based service rollout, this is gonna become critical for us as we move forward. We'll talk a little bit about that with our uh, horizontally integrated edge cloud at Juniper. Closed loop automation we touched on, and then distributed security services at all layers. How do you offer both connected security as well as security at every layer in your network as you go forward? Okay, so these are the things we're gonna to touch upon and we'll, we'll really highlight very quickly um, how Juniper is looking at some of these problems and what we offer in the portfolio to go do this. Um, let's take a look first at massively scalable IP fabric with network slicing. Um, if I was describing an athlete, I would say, do you have the raw power <laughs> that's capable uh, to play the game, uh, if you will? So think about what are the transitions in the network today? So first of all, Every area in the network from the access to the core is being looked at to have an increasing amount of bandwidth. I consider this baseline. Do you have the strength to play here, right? Uh, we see the access moving to 10 gig and 25 gig. You see the pre-ag moving to 25 gig and 100 gig. You see aggregation to end by 100 gig and you see the edge and the core moving to 400 gig interfaces. So not just the bandwidth that has to be there, you actually have to have the ability to offer the proper feature sets um, at scale. When you think of things like machine to machine uh, type of capabilities or IoT uh, capabilities, you're actually exponentially increasing your endpoints that, you're net, that are connecting into your network. This means your network has to be able to handle all that logical scale as well. So it's not just enough to have the raw power, you have to have the intelligence to do the packet processing on it. Now Juniper has invested a lot in silicon. We have some of the most programmable chips in the industry. In fact, our latest fifth generation silicon offers basically three times the performance, 300% at half the power. We've also increased our scale. We offer two to three times higher tunnel scale on, our, on a lot of our systems. This allows us to play in multiple use cases and kind of handle things that you might not know are coming down the pipe um, <clears throat> overall. So what else do we have here? If we take a look at it, I really feel Juniper has innovated across the board. We talked about the silicon. We've innovated on our chassis, our universal chassis system. We also offer the first 400 gig native MaxSec capabilities, some of the best in the industry capabilities for 5G. As well, we have the first 3GPP compliant CUPS user plane. You can actually use our user plane with any uh, mobile packet core control plane from, from uh, any of the, uh, the vendors there. So you can see we're, we're innovating at multiple levels here to offer you this baseline network, that service fabric that's very powerful, sliceable, and intelligent. So after we've built this network, let's move on to operations. How do you handle your day two operations, your day three? Frankly, how do you even handle your planning? Um, there's some interesting data points at the top of the slide here. And I think they're interesting ones to um, internalize overall. So 10X, the number of endpoints served, 5x the nodes in the network, 25 times the incidents per hour per team, uh, massive amount of CLI on individual devices that uh, is not necessarily the same. Uh, 4.8, <laughs> this is a great one, average number of clouds used to run applications. That is staggering. You can see what this means. The actual service offerings you have, the number of endpoints you're managing, especially with M2M, IoT type applications, and 5G is actually increasing exponentially. In most cases, to most of the CXOs I've talked to, they're under heavy budget constraints from an OPEX perspective. They actually have to be able to run their network with either the same or less people um, and offer all these new services that are increasing exponentially, as we said. Only way we've seen to do this is with the proper automated operations. But Juniper has invested heavily in this. Um, if you look at our overall operating system and hardware, we have massive amounts invested in class streaming telemetry off box, uh, so you can actually analyze information from the network. We've also invested in multiple different off-box software. HealthBot's an example where we can monitor, analyze, and act on streaming telemetry. We have a program called Northstar, which we can actually do real-time topology discovery, state updates, real-time notifications for discovery, planning, and path control. Also, in order to automate the full operations lifecycle, we're also partnering with Anuda using their Atom uh, functionality. This allows us to do service provisioning, uh, automation of workflows, has an integrated visual workflow builder as well. 
As you can see, it's, it's a very tight closed loop. It allows you to act much faster in terms of operating your network. Okay, let's keep going and take a look at this. So we talked about overall power of, of the overall fabric. We've talked about how quick and agile you can be in terms of running your operations. Now let's talk about how, how efficient are you in delivering services? So Juniper believes in multi-cloud solutions. Uh, we see this, like we saw on the previous slide, 4.8 average class touched for an application. Now, in addition to connecting perhaps to hyperscalers or various OTTs or applications on their network, what we're seeing is more and more uh, service providers are offering their own clouds and distributing their own cloud to offer various service delivery. Super important for 5G applications where you have latency considerations to handle. Um, and you can see what this means. What you really need to do here is take a look at how do I standardize and distribute in a cost-effective manner? So with Juniper's universal edge cloud solution, you have a common underlay, um, very high performance, flexible um, underlay. You have the overlay and orchestration capabilities here. Okay, All this is built with a horizontal NFBI stack where you can manage multiple DNFs and services from any of your um, vendors uh, on top of this infrastructure. What this really is is a production grade uh, distributed edge cloud comes complete with orchestration, automation, security, analytics to deploy any types of services, 4G, 5G, IoT, you name it. So we've also taken this a step further where we've partnered with StackPath, who has a global footprint, to offer a distributed edge cloud as a service. So in this case, you can have StackPath actually stand up your distributed edge cloud to offer services for your customers. Okay, let's take a final look at security also. As we said earlier, when we combine IoT, 5G, m to m applications, you can already see how the number of endpoints that are touching your network is increasing literally exponentially. You can see some of the statistics on the slide as well. Six trillion is the cost of cybercrime by 2021, 1.1 billion identities exposed, uh, 856 million new unique pieces of malware. You can see the rate at which cyber attacks occur, 39 uh, per second, it's, it's crazy. So what are we looking at from a Juniper perspective? We realized we actually have to change the paradigm here in how we manage security. What we've done is we've combined some of the best in class cloud delivered and uh, analysis and security and orchestration, uh, along with both physical and virtual products in our infrastructure. So essentially, what are we looking at? We're looking at the entire network ecosystem. We're looking at how to safeguard the users, the applications, as well as the infrastructure at all layers in order to offer a complete end-to-end -end security solution. Uh, it's constantly updated with things like our second tell. Uh, we have cloud-delivered um, partnerships with people like Carrero as well to offer DDoS protection where the Carrero functionality can actually program our endpoints like our MX uh, portfolio and actually block out DOS attacks, et cetera. So this gives us the power to look holistically across the network and offer security from an end-to-end -end perspective. Okay, hopefully this piqued your interest in looking at how would Juniper go and partner with you to build out an agile network for both the known and unknown things that are happening uh, over the next few years. Uh, we believe we have an extremely complete solution that allows us to have a very uh, scalable and agile network for next generation service delivery. I wanna thank you for your time today uh, and I hopefully you've enjoyed this session and you'll sit in for a more detailed discussion at some of our other sessions. Thank you.